just want to thank you so much for coming and visiting today. We, we really uh, appreciate having you guys. Um, Johnny, and Michael, and Steve. Um, firstly, can you just share with us a little bit about the ministry of what God Squad is and how that has looked over the years? Sure. Yeah, thanks, Dave. And um, just before I start, I do want to just acknowledge you and Christine and uh, all of you here um, that you've made us feel welcome. Um, you know, we're your brothers and sisters in Christ. We have a different ministry and it's quite a unique ministry in many ways, but we're all part of the body of the Lord. Mm -hmm. right? A coat of yeah. many colours. Mm -hmm. A coat of many colours. And uh, that's very beautiful and very precious to us mm -hmm. and an honour to be able to actually share together with you all today. So we're um, we're really, I'm really excited to be here. You know, I've known this good man for a long time, but uh, that's another story you can ask me afterwards about that. It's, it's a good story. Um, God's quite itself, okay. The reality is that um, God's quite is, a, you know, is uh, as you'll see from what's on our back, is C and C. And CMC stands for Christian Motorcycle Club. First and foremost, we're Christians. First and foremost, and most importantly of all, we are part of the body of Christ. We carry the cross of Christ on our back, and we take that very seriously. And the vision of, uh, of God Squad actually came about through uh, our late um, first international president, president of Melbourne chapter. Um, God Squad originally started in Sydney uh, 52 years ago, and, uh, and uh, was uh, going okay up there. And John Smith, who was actually from Melbourne and a Uniting Church pastor actually had heard about Scott Squad, went up there. Long story short was eventually, uh, after that 18 months, Melbourne chapter actually was given the honour of what we call flying colours, which is the backpacks that you see and, um, and the patch here as well. And the ministry of God Squad really is a ministry that's actually to those who are marginalised, who are lost, who are um, dispossessed, homeless um, and particularly to what we call the bikies, the 1% biker scene. So you have many, many different clubs uh, who ride motorcycles, they ride them hard and fast and they live hard and fast. Uh, but they are uh, just as deserving of hearing the gospel of Jesus and the good news of the gospel mm -hmm. as anybody else. So I guess for us, you know, in brief, someone described it really well, I thought, you know, a few weeks ago. and. Uh, yeah, we were talking about it and they said our ministry is kind of like the sort of ministry where we will cross the road to actually meet with people that other people will cross the road to avoid mm. all right and i hope and pray that we continue you know in that place in us and in that service of honoring god and actually ministering to those who really are and that includes, you know, and uh, you know, our clubhouse is in Collingwood, Northern Chapter. We're in the heart of an area with pretty profound um, you know, issues in terms of homelessness, drug addiction, violence, crime, significant mental health concerns. Um, I think that one of the things I think for us that's been the key is that Proverbs from Proverbs 16, 7, uh, 16 verse 7, which, is, which says that when a man's ways please God, he maketh even his enemies. So that's sort of in a nutshell as to how it grew. There's so much more to our story. It's yeah. in, 50, in our first, in 51st year. Um, yeah. And, and so that's another question I was going to ask. So the purpose in, that, in those 50 years, uh, I guess the ministry has changed somewhat, you know, because times have, have changed, but the purpose still remains the same. Right? Yes, yeah, yeah, it does, Dave. It really does. And, um, you know, we. We are convicted that, uh, you know, this is a ministry that God has ordained for us and that has sent us out to each lead a part of. Uh, and uh, it's not an easy ministry. Um, you know, it can be very difficult at times. It can be very uh, demanding at times, particularly when, we, uh, when we've when got a late night and it's 2 o'clock in the morning and uh, it's pouring rain and freezing cold and uh, we're on the bikes and uh, getting soaked to the skin. Um, but that's part of the joy of the ministry as well, because we're following in the footsteps of uh, you know, the apostles and, mm -hmm. and Jesus, and we want to honour that whatever we do. How many God Squad chapters are there throughout Australia and even uh, internationally? Sure. Okay. Well, there's 19 chapters in Australia, so basically 
We're from right down Tasmania, which Steve Bob will tell you is the uh, top of Australia, not really the bottom. <laughs> yeah, is that right? Mainland, yeah. But we're all, we're all the way up the east coast of Australia. Uh, we're also in New Zealand. Um, so we have 19 chapters in Australia, and uh, we have another 17 chapters spread around the world from areas as diverse as Ukraine, USA, um, England, Ireland, Estonia, Finland, Sweden, Germany, you know, and so on. Um, significant number of chapters. In fact, they're actually written with six uh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, can you tell us well, what are some of the biggest challenges then that, that you know, as a ministry, the God Squad uh, faces today? Sure. Yeah, and, it's, and there are challenges for us, there really are, um, because society has changed and people have changed, and the young people uh, in particular, there's so much more, you know, and so many different uh, opportunities in terms of uh, entertainment and options and so on. There's the internet, social media, you know, all of those things. Yeah. So the challenge is for us, I guess, in some ways, about how do we stay relevant? How do we actually still continue to preach the gospel into a world that is changing very radically mm -hmm. in some ways but yet in other ways the needs remain as profound and as based as they were 2000 years ago yeah. so um do you need support from local churches and if so what does that look like or oh, absolutely we do we sure do and i can tell you one of the things in significant that was so significant i think from those very early days and john you'll remember this from those very very early days we did a lot of work and a lot of ministry out into churches, you know, such as this, you know, through the goodness of uh, people like David and uh, other ministers and, uh, who invited us out. We spent a lot of time also ministering into the churches, youth groups, ministers' nights, mm -hmm. mornings. And one of the things I think that was profoundly important and useful in creating and, and, and ensuring the stability of God's God through many, many trials and many hard times was the faithfulness of men and women and young women and women, young men and women as well, and children, whose faithfulness of getting down onto their knees every night and praying yeah. and praying over us. It was so significant and so important and remains so. Yeah. And I was having a look, you know, just very quickly, if I can share this, you know, I was having a look at 2 Corinthians. Um, chapter 1 today, uh, where Paul, in Paul's letter to, 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 in his second letter to the Corinthians, where he says, and this is from verse 10, the latter part of verse 10, on him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. As you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favour granted us in answer to the prayers of many. So I can tell you, even for a person who's actually, you know, disabled or, you know, in a hospital or in an aged care home, no matter what stage of life they're at, the power of prayer, the power of an earnest prayer is massive, massive. And it's what carries us, it's what uplifts us, it's what, you know, sustains us and nourishes us and gives us the, you know, the strength and the courage to go on and to express and let's talk about the gospel of Jesus and the liberating gospel of Jesus Amen. that changes lives. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. We shall be praying for the ministry of, of the God's Word. Thank you for coming out today. We really appreciate having all you guys. Um, yeah, well, well it would be good before we finish with one more song. Stay here. Steve, uh, Johnny, why don't you come out? And, and Michael, come out too. And we'll, we'll pray for you guys now and then we'll we're gonna finish the close of service with one last song. Yeah, come out guys. Father God, we do thank you. We thank you for um, uh, all of your blessings and your goodness and we, we pray um, for these guys and for, for the ministry um, of the God's squad. We pray for your protection out on the roads. We pray for new connections and conversations um, that they would bring the gospel, Lord, to those who um, may not be uh, coming into to churches and, and may not be seeking you, Lord God, but that you would open new pathways, Lord God. We pray 
that you'll continue to bless this ministry. We pray that you'll continue to watch over and lead and guide uh, these guys by the power of your precious Holy Spirit. We thank you for the fruitful ministry over some 50 odd years and we pray that it would continue to be a blessing for many in the years to come. And Lord, may you be glorified through this precious uh, work and, and ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you so much.